crane. I guess the press cuts were Crate. just boring okay. bastards. Yes, Mr. Linden. I'm writing in regards to your outstanding debts that you have chosen to ignore. The Prescotts may not be established business gentlemen, but we are businessmen and expect our due. We take our silence, or we take your silence as a personal insult and thus dedicate our family name to make you pay your debt with 10% interest, plus a written apology. If those conditions are not met by the end of the day, July 24 in the year of our Lord, 1903, rest assured we will make your life a living hell. We are the douchebags. Ring, ring. Jeez. Wow, sir. Talk about home on the range. All right, what do you got here? There's no way this Buttons. rusty ass button will activate these ropes or pulleys. Let's give it a shot. Oh. Then give me the option to give it a shot. Got a pitchfork. If a zombie shows up, I have my weapon. Nice. I like the way you think, Max. Huh. These hooks are used to lift haystacks. I saw them in a Friday the 13th. <laughs> Man, the references this game makes is great. Nothing there, huh? Ah, the good old days. 60 cents for milk. Dang. So many haystacks. So, so many haystacks. So few needles. Chloe would make a great detective, too. Okay, uh, we need to read, catch up on these, because... We have a, quite a few to read. Where did we leave off? Uh, did that? Did that? Uh, I think we did this. Nope, did not. Of course, it was much easier for me to explore David's garage since Joyce booted his ass out. That made Chloe more content than I've just about seen her since I returned. I feel kind of bad for David, but he overstepped his authority. Dismissed. Dismissed, and it's so much easier to grab David's X-Files when he's not there. After we gathered our new info, like Halloween treats, I loved watching Chloe go into Sherlock mode while we examined all our clues on our big old drawing board. Of course, we all know what she's more of Dr. Watson, right? Elementary. Honestly, with all the impeding doom and sadness, I felt so happy just to find myself back in action with my best friend and her butterfly blue hair. But first things first, I really had to go and see Kate. I've never visited anybody in the hospital before, much less anybody who's tried to commit suicide, so I was happy. Chloe wanted to come along for support. The antiseptic smell and the endless white walls always kind of weird me out. Or maybe I'm just projecting my own fear of mortality. When I saw Kate in her room, surrounded by cards, flowers, and balloons, all I could think of was when I saw her the last time on the roof. Her face was so sad and sincere and helpless then. Now she had more life in her than I'd seen in a long time. I had no idea what to say to somebody in a situation like this. How are you after you almost jumped off a roof? But Kate's gentle spirit made it easy. I was overjoyed to see that she was drawing again and made, making plans for the future, including plans to get justice for what Nathan Prescott had done to her, what I call revenge. So after getting the inside info and assist from the other members of our team, Chloe and I made our way to the boys' dorm, a.k.a. Nathan's lair. Chloe stood guard on, out in the hall, and I stealthed my way into Nathan's room. And even though I've become a master spy and detective, I still get surprised by things I see or find. Like Nathan's sleek, expressional bro cave. It was like walking from light to shadow in a single step. I swear I could feel the temperature drop the second I walked in. But then Nathan knows photography and he knows how to keep the film and equipment chilled. I saw my instant film poured in Mr. Jefferson's classroom. Speaking of cold stuff, Nathan's room was layered in creepy shit. The disturbing but impressive photos, all the evidence from his father's bullying, and probably the most important clue we could ever find, Nathan's phone, likely loaded with messages and mysteries. It's not a good thing that I've internalized spying and stealing so casually over the past week. Everyday hero, am I right? And that's when Nathan Prescott showed up. He looked so wild-eyed and out of control that I felt a twinge of sympathy that he clearly needed help. But then I remembered he was also an asshole and had been extremely dangerous to me, Chloe, and Kate. So before I got or had to rewind, Warren entered the scene and my white knight headbutted Nathan in perfect payback. I couldn't believe it. Neither could Nathan. 
In fact, Warren literally started to go ape all over Nathan's face. It wasn't cool, but my nerves were so frayed from the week and I was so over all the Blackwell bullies that I almost didn't want to stop Warren from beating Nathan into the floor. Warren had his own issues to work out with Nathan, but this wasn't the time or place. Even if Nathan deserved it, and I wouldn't have been happy to watch Warren show him who was Blackwell's boss now. After that dorm brawl, Chloe and I headed to the beach to deal with Frank and see if we could get him to join us. I had to be careful and not get him all tweaked out. He was pretty pissed that someone had gotten into his RV and borrowed his account book, but once he saw that we didn't care about the drugs or money, only Rachel, he mellowed out. All I could think was, I'm trying to get a drug dealer to help me find a missing girl. Incredibly, Frank actually agreed to help. He knows how naive and clueless we are, so I hope that our sincerity swayed him. I'm still unsure about him, and I can't be so naive not to keep my rewind guard up. I don't know how much, know much about him except that he sells drugs, has a wicked temper, and that he loved Rachel even more than his beans. <laughs> So we get to add another member to our team, Booyah. My life feels so surreal at this point, I don't know how to react anymore. I can't rewind time and space, but, or I can rewind time and space, but it is aging me before my own time and space. Am I learning, I couldn't, am I learning things I shouldn't, messing up too much shit, including my own history? Obviously my nosebleeds and dizzy spells are a bad sign that I'm overusing my powers, but it's become almost part of my nature, or maybe a habit. Power corrupts? Not yet, I hope. I remember his famous episode of the original Star Trek where Kirk has to go back in time and let the person he loves die so the Nazis won't win the war. What kind of fucked up choice is that? What would have happened if I had not been in the school bathroom to save Chloe that day? But damn it, I was there and thus I was supposed to do this. Destiny. And the fact that we were able to convince Frank to actually help us gives us the most hope I've had in a while. Yes, Chloe and I were stupid to confront Frank like that considering how he reacted before, but I don't see how anyone could say he didn't really love Rachel Amber. He shouldn't have pulled a knife on Chloe though, and I don't like that he sells all these dangerous men to teenagers, especially Nathan. He needs psychiatric supervision, not just baggies of pills. At least he won't be going, won't be going to Frank for again. I still don't know why Chloe or even Rachel would want to hang out with Frank, but I can't sus, can't sus that out anymore. Maybe if I hadn't left town, I'd be less judgmental, but now we have Nathan's phone, David's coordinates, Frank's account book, and a big board of clues which brings us closer to finding Rachel Amber. Finally. So maybe the tide is finally turning, or time is finally turning. This is the moment where all the clues come together and we finally have a location outside of town that may lead us straight to Rachel Amber and beyond. After evening, after everything that happened with Frank, I had to convince Chloe to keep going forward with me since I don't do feel we're at the end of our road. Hopefully not the end of the world, but whatever anger Chloe has inside her, that makes her so self-destructive is matched by her balls and bravery. Yes, Chloe has gotten me nearly killed, but I know she would die for me. And I don't forget I put her in a wheelchair to slowly die in another reality. And Chloe is more focused now than, I, than before. I told her that we had to keep moving forward no matter what. I couldn't find Rachel on my own. That was enough. Now it's time to shine a light into the dark room. I'm worried. Hey Liam, we got a message. Pussies can't fucking fight. You fuck up my dorm door, I'll kill you, your scholarship. Okay, I don't care about you. You legit don't scare me, punk. Hi Max, just wanted to see how the search was going. Thanks Frank for getting closer. I see you by Chloe Diggs. You stop by later if you both want to party, and good luck. Aw. Nice guy. Woo! Now I feel fat and hate myself. Lemon cuck takes will fill the void. I was gonna say, uh, that means you just gotta get more sweets, my man. I'm right there with you. It's like, oh, I feel dirty. What makes me feel sexy? Brownies. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm gonna have to get me some brownies, seriously. Like, I don't think they close before I get off stream. Or like, after I get off stream. I'm gonna order me some brownies. I'm looking forward to this. What am I looking for? Ground. Found something. No more secrets, Sean Prescott. Whoa. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. It's totally brand new. Why? Because he's a fucking psychopath. No, Supermax. You can't open this with your bare hands. I was going to see if it was a padlock. Fucking. Okay, Chloe. Um, I, I found some kind of hatch, but it's locked. I got this. I hope. 
Okay. Well, I found something, so... Give me a hot second. I'm gonna push a button. It'll let me. It will not. Okay, what's that attached to? Just a beam. Oh, great. A stack platform. What's a platform for? Chloe, can you give me a hand? Sidekick at your service. I looked it up. I can send you ice cream, but it has either be shipped with dry ice or sent in a freezer bag container with coolants. Oh my I'll god! Pop that away, Super Max. I dig having minions. Gonna look up recipes. Be <laughs> I love that this is becoming a thing. Oh, good thing you moved. Didn't have to use my rewind power. Not get munched in the head. That looks sturdy enough to stand on. Oh, okay. I've loved honeycomb ice cream since I had it in Ireland back when I was 16. Oh, yeah? And then, uh, cereal just awakened your love. Your long forlorn love. Nope. It sounds pretty freaking awesome. Without tearing my flesh off. I need to hook this up to something heavier. Like the thing down there? I thought this just flashed, did it not? A barrels? Will that work? There you go. Oh, <gasps> owl! Owl friend. Sorry, buddy. Didn't mean to disturb you. Go back taking your nap. Okay, good to know I can't fall off the edge. Oh, well, she can do that. Uh. Okay. Need something. Hi, Chloe. You wanna help? Instead of just staring, watching me do everything? Can't act with anything else up here. Good evening, Doctor Who. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so there's nothing up here. Get down. <gasps> down. See if there's anything I can do. Can't do anything with that. Is there anything in this crate? Did we check this? Ah. <sighs> The good old yeah. days. You found a recipe. Mmm. Pretty sure oh, this old pitchfork won't open a padlock. Alright, one of these Try things again, will say Max. take, right? Photo. Wow, sir. Yeah, we saw that. Talk about home on the range. Tracks. Great. There's nothing I guess in the here. Right? were just nope. born bastards. Tractor, can I just ram this into it? Sounds like a legit thing to do. Pliers. Damn, those pliers are fossilized. Even Harry Aaron Prescott was into selfies. All right, guys, what am I missing? I want to. I want to hook something up to the motor up here. Like, no, damn it. If you get too close to the edge, it jumps down. to do what my journal say I have to find a way to open the hatch yes thank you here we go no look I do anything with that no 
Am I missing something blatantly obvious, guys? I'm not seeing it. I said this would tear my hands off. Here's the other end of the rope. That's nice. Oh, rewind time. I always forget this actually can work. It doesn't remind my position, it just rewinds time. Alright, here we go. No! Stay up here. Aha! Attach. Did it. All right, pull. Okay. Max Giver strikes again. Progress. Progress achieved. Hey, Chloe, look what I found. Damn, this is heavy. I love Chloe's outfit. Oh, what I don't like this. Is this? I don't like this. I don't like this. Do Jackpot would not be the word I would use. This is? Jackpot is, is not the word I would like to see. Who built this kind of place? Psychopaths. Prescott, of course. Murderers. My heart rate says otherwise. About what? This bunker is so surreal. Mm, look. First a padlock, then a digicode. I don't like this. Someone really doesn't want visitors. Uh. Seven zero three eight. Was that it? So I'll need a code. I don't remember to code. It's three numbers this time. That you're upset? It takes a lot for my heart rate to rise. Well, check this out. These ones are all worn off. That tells me that he uses them a lot. How can I figure this out? Uh... All right, that might be some of the notes we saw lying around. Which would be terrible security. If you want this much security, you don't leave your freaking password lying around. Wow, sir. Talk about home on the range. I guess the Prescotts were just born Damn it. bastards. I want to look at that. I guess the Prescotts were just born bastards. Okay. I don't see any numbers. I hope I wasn't supposed to memorize the number. Oh, there were random numbers on that piece of paper. Which piece of paper? With the war numbers? This piece of paper? Wow, sir. Talk about home on the range. The one with the phone passcodes. I guess the Prescotts were just born bastards. Yeah, I don't.